America will be judge. That's why this weighing scale is here. And I'm sure you have heard this over and over and over and so much so, most Christians just couldn't care less about the word America will be judge. Am I right? Yes. Am I right? Yes. Let's be honest. Yes. Am I right? Yes. You see, you have, you have heard this over and over. Even I myself have stood here and in several other conferences in the US and have said the same thing. But if God had judged when he first spoke those words, where would we be today? We would have been gone to hell, you know? Right? You wouldn't be sitting here and enjoying the grace of God. If he had executed his judgment there and then, when the word was first spoken over this nation, where would we be? So again, he extends his grace. He extends his grace. One more year, Lord. One more year. One more year. The Lord Jesus Christ goes and stands before the Father God and he prays, one more year. One more year. One more year. It's because of his prayers that judgment is postponed, postponed and postponed. But there will come a time where it cannot be postponed anymore. Right? There will always come a time. And now is that crucial time. That is why at such a time as this, the Lord specifically told me, now you go and bring this message. So America will be judged. How will she be judged? Two ways. A flood is determined for her. It will devastate the Mideast. A fire is appointed for her. It will devastate the Midwest. So to the east is a flood. To the west is fire. I don't exactly know why. But I'm just saying to you what the Lord told me. A flood is determined for her. It will devastate the Mideast. And a fire is appointed for her. It will devastate the Midwest. Then the Lord Jesus looked at me and he said, Now I want you to go to America and warn them of the judgment that is coming upon them. Now please listen very carefully. If they choose the wrong president. You know, this is the second time in my entire ministry in the U.S., from 1991 till now where the Lord specifically spoke to me concerning the destiny of the United States in relationship to choosing the right president. I have never heard from the Lord in the previous years like that. So, he said, go and warn them of the judgment that will come upon them if they choose the wrong president. He, now referring to Mr. Trump, should continue for another term for God's purposes to be done for this nation. Which means, God is extending his grace towards the United States of America for one more time. One more time. You know, sometimes you cannot see what is taking place behind the scene. We look at a person's external acts. And then we want to hurl stones at him. Throw all kinds of brick bats. This is a good for nothing president. This is not nonsense president. During a recent online study that we were doing, I felt a stirring one day. And I made an appeal to all the students who were on our class 
I said I call for a 21 day Daniel fast for the US elections which should have begun from the 12th of October and 21 days will last right up to a day before the US election November 2 it will last that long so I, I said I feel a great stirring in my spirit this nation is at a crossroad and you should not vote for the wrong guy so wrong guy should not come to office if a wrong guy comes to office then this nation is doomed you're doomed for good no more salvation so I felt a great stirring in my spirit and I made this announcement after I made this announcement I think a day or two later one of the student he blasted me he wrote me a mail and he blasted me say what what in the world do you know about all the mess that Mr. Trump is doing how can you support this man how can you you know he went on rattling you know he has taken away this this that all that and then he finally ended up by saying we don't need any foreigner to come and tell us how to vote. Okay. That last sentence, I looked at it, I read, I read it again and again. I tried to look at his heart, in what attitude he was writing, you know. The point he was making was more about his personal social benefits that he can gain from the system. So, translate into normal language would be bread and butter. You don't just look at bread and butter. You must look at the destiny of the nation. Not just bread and butter. You know, when you are in the right standing with God, the next four years can be you may see a different Mr. Trump than what is the first four years were and I tell you one truth I've never seen any president of any nation so badly insulted yes. so badly trash like Mr. Trump of the US no other nations have ever done that to their presidents or to their prime ministers, you know. The utter disrespect that the general American people have for their head of state. That is very, very contemptuous. You can't respect, you can't honor, whether you like or you don't like. That's not the issue, no. It's not the man, you know, it's the office. It's the office that you pay respect to. If not this man, another man will come. It's not the man, it's the office. So whoever sits in that chair deserves to be respected, deserves to be honored. You agree? Yes. I feel very, very saddened, you know, when I, when I read in the media, how much they're bashing him left and right until the he's the what? The media. Yeah. yeah, yeah, the media. That is why you need godly media. Yes. Amen. Yes. See, I cannot cite anything, I don't want to make any personal comment, that's not my place. So, I will just stick to. Now, I'm not here to answer the brother's letter. I'm not here to tell you how to vote. I'm here to tell you what God thinks. Amen. That's my job. Amen. To reveal to you the mind of the Lord. Yes. To reveal to you the will of the Lord. That's my job. Then you decide. In 1992, or yeah, 1992, when I came to the U.S. a second time, or maybe it's 91, I was interviewed by a Christian TV station in Chicago. So at the end of the interview, 
the person who was interviewing me asked me a question. So this is your first visit to our country. What do you think about our country? I looked at him and I said, my opinions don't matter. But let me tell you how God sees America. And I gave him the word of the Lord, how God sees America. See, my personal opinion doesn't matter, you know. I may like today, I may not like tomorrow. So a man's opinions can, cannot be trusted. They cannot be trusted. When I first came to America, you know, every they, Americans like to use the word, oh, I love you. Oh, I love you. In the East, the word love is a very strong word. When we say, I love you, it means I will die for you. So when I saw all this, oh, I thought, oh my God, these people are willing to die for me. Why? Why do they love me so much? So these thoughts were going on in my mind now. Oh my God, look at these Americans. What great love. I love you. I love you. Then I saw them calling their dog. Oh, doggy, I love you. <laughs> okay. Then I began to weigh, put on the scale. They love me and they love the dog. So am I the, equal to the dog? Then I, it began to make me wonder the concept of love that you use. And then I found, actually what you really mean is, I like you. When you say, I love you, you mean, I like you. See? So I like you today, I don't like you tomorrow. So I love you today, I don't love you tomorrow. This is human heart. I mean, human heart that fluctuates to the, like a seesaw. But God's opinions does not change. It is more important to know what God thinks than what a person thinks. So, he, Mr. Trump should continue for another term for God's purposes to be done for this nation. Which means... They are not finished yet. God wants to give you another four years of grace. Four years to restart something. Restart. It's a restart. So this first four years was just following the ground. Following the ground. So the next four years will be for the seeds to germinate. For the shoots to come and for flowers to come and for fruits to come and the tree to blossom and grow. And you will be once more be a respected nation. A nation that is looked up. Presently, I'm, I'm sad to say this. I'm sorry to say this. No nation in the world respects America. The high reputation that America once had is at all time low. It's not because of Mr. Trump. Not because of him. It's a system that has accumulated like dust, you know. Dust gathers dust accumulated to what, where we are today. But the purposes of God for this nation is not over yet. And on the, so the first part of the word I received on Yom Kippur. Then on the 5th of October, as I was studying the book of Daniel in chapter 11, suddenly I saw a vision. And the Lord began to speak to me about the United States again. And he said, three powerful prince angels are stationed with President Trump. Just like the angels stood with King Darius to strengthen him. You read that in Daniel chapter 11 verse 1. This angel who stood with King Darius. Now King Darius is not a Christian. He's not even a Jew. He's a Gentile. A Persian king. But God's prince angel was appointed to stand with him. To guard him and protect him. In the similar manner, three, eight, 
three powerful prince angels are stationed with President Trump. And they will strengthen him and he will triumph. So what exactly that word triumph means, I don't know. It can mean he will be re-elected. It can also mean he will overcome all the brick bats that were thrown at him. He will triumph. So I don't want to add in my own opinion or commentary there. And the Lord Jesus said this, I love him. He is my servant. And when the Lord Jesus spoke that, I saw tears coming down his eyes. He said, I love him. He is my servant. He will fulfill my will for this nation as well as for Israel. If the Christians in this country will gather together in groups, in churches, to pray sincerely without prejudice and bias, then I will push back the enemy's plans to thwart Trump. Right now, all hell has been released against Mr. Trump. That is why even the good media who are supporting him suddenly turn violent. Suddenly have turned against him. It is all the work of the enemy. How can they suddenly change? Nobody suddenly changes, you know. It's the work of the enemy. So what does this tell us? Prayers for the president has gone way down. Way down. If you all don't mind, may I frankly tell you my personal opinion about American Christians? Okay? You won't get offended. You will still love me. You love me or you like me? <laughs> tell me. You love me or you like me? Are you sure? You will die for me? American Christians don't really care. They don't really care for another. Now, I don't mean each and every American, no? Generally. Okay, generally. They don't care. Why? They are self-centered. Very self-centered. So this is general. Now when you look at the Christians, they are no better either. How much? Now you tell me honestly, okay? How many of you sincerely pray, stand in the gap and pray for your great 